Hi, welcome to my second lab video report where in this lab, the experimenter is tasked to investigate the charge of a piece of clear tape by using a different, more sophisticated method. This lab acts as a continuation from lab one where the experimenter was tasked to create a charged piece of U-tape and determine its charge qualitatively by interacting with household objects and quantitatively by treating the two pieces of tape as point charges. Through this approach, the experimenter also had to calculate the number of excess electrons on the U-tape and the ratio between the number of excess electrons to the number of atoms. From lab one, the following data was collected and was used again to complete the task lab two required. Length of the U-tape was 20 centimeters. The mass of the U-tape was 1.6 grams. The measured distance between tapes A and B was 7.5 centimeters. And the force acting on tape A was 0.15696 newtons. By using this data found in lab one, the experimenter is expected to do the following. Treat the tapes as lines of distributed charges. Accurately calculate and derive the charge of the tape using key physics principles and concepts. Demonstrate the superposition of the electric field on tape A using glow script and represent the forces acting on tape A using glow script. Compare the values found in lab one and lab two and briefly deduce which of the two is more accurate. Like lab one, the experimenter is expected to calculate the following by the end of the experiment the charge of the tape, the number of excess electrons, and the ratio of the number of electrons to the number of atoms. The approach to solving this problem is heavily dependent on the equation of an electric field of a typical charge and the superposition of electric fields. Take this line of charges for example. The electric field of the topmost charge acts downwards and to the right at the point of observation. If you take the electric field of another charge along the line, the net electric field becomes the sum of these two electric fields, one and two. However, to most accurately calculate the net electric field, one would need to use all the charges along the line and sum the electric fields influenced by these charges at the point of the observation. Let's apply the same approach to the lab particularly. On this slide, the two tapes are individually represented as a line of three charges. The electric field at the location of charge A is influenced by charges 1, 2, and 3, and by summing the electric fields, the overall electric field by the charges from the bottom tape at point A looks like this. Now, after applying the same concepts to the other points along the tape, we see that the x components of the electric field cancels out each other, resulting to an overall electric field acting downwards, which makes sense because the charge of the tape is negative. Comparing this to the electric field of a charge rod acting on a point, one can observe the electric fields from the tape acts the same way as that of a charged rod. Therefore, as an assumption and idealization, the experimenter used the equation of an electric field of a uniformly charged rod to represent the electric field of the U-tape. Hence, the following key concepts were used to calculate the charge. Coulomb's law, the electric field of a charged rod, and Newton's second law. As a disclaimer, the following assumptions were made as well. The top tape was treated as a point charge, and the electric field formula uses that of a charged rod based on observational similarities. That environmental factors such as air pressure or humidity did not play a part in the system and interactions between the two tapes. That each of the charged tapes had the same distribution of charged particles and the same overall charge, and that the charges are aligned on a straight line only on the tape and not scattered over the area of the tape. Applying Coulomb's law, the electric force on the tape acts upwards. Since the tape is levitating, the tape must be at static equilibrium, and by applying Newton's second law, the experimenter deduced that the magnitude of the electric force is equal to the magnitude of the gravitational force. Hence, by inputting all values collected from lab 1, the electric field of a uniformly charged rod, and Coulomb's law, the experimenter calculated the charge of the tape to be negative 1.28 times 10 to the 7 coulombs. Then, by finding the ratio of the charge found earlier to the charge of an electron, the experimenter calculated there was an excess of 8 times 10 to the 11 electrons on the U-tape. And by dividing the number of electrons by the number of atoms on the surface of a U-tape, the experimenter found that the ratio of electrons to atoms was 3.33 times 10 to negative 6 electrons per atom. First, all data and constants were input into the program. Then a function that determines the electric field acting on a point and a function that creates a line of similarly charged spheres were defined and created. Using these functions, two lines of spheres were created to represent the linear distribution of charges along the pieces of tape, fittingly named top tape and bottom tape. Then by using a for loop, the electric field that each of these charges were calculated and the overall electric force acting on the top tape was calculated. Finally, the arrows that represented electric force and magnetic force were generated, 
resulting in a pictorial representation of the forces acting on the system here. Out of curiosity, the experimenter wanted to see how the electric force would change as the number of spheres n increased. As n increased, the percentage error between the electrical and gravitational force decreased, which makes sense as n approaches infinity, the magnitude of the electric force should approach that of the gravitational force. The values found in lab 1 and lab 2 were radically different where all the values in lab 2 were greater than those of lab 1. In lab 1, the charge of the tape was negative 2.1 times 10 to negative 8 coulombs, the number of electrons was 1.31 times 10 to 11 electrons, and the ratio of electrons to atoms was 5.47 times 10 to negative 7 electrons per atom. In lab 2, however, the charge of the tape was negative 1.28 times 10 to negative 7 coulombs, the number of electrons in excess was 8 times 10 to 11 electrons, and the ratio of electrons to atoms was 3.33 times 10 to negative 6 electrons per atom. Since a piece of tape consists of thousands of atoms and electrons, it is more likely that a charged tape would have multiple charged particles, electrons, on its surface. Therefore, using a line of charge is a more suitable attempt at finding the overall charge of the U-tape than treating the object as one massive point charge. To conclude, the answers provided in lab 2 is a more accurate approximation to the actual charge of the entire U-tape.